Hi, I'm Ray Ridley of Ridley Engineering, and welcome to this first in a series of videos about switching power supplies. In this very first part of the series, we're going to ask the question, why do you want to build a switching power supply? And uh, you may be in a position where your company is just starting to look at these for various reasons, and you're wondering that, wondering about what kind of thing you're going to get yourself into. So this video series is brought to you by Ridley TV, and we're going to try and answer a lot of questions you may have about switching supplies. So first, let's look at what you may have today, which is a linear power supply. Many industries have already switched over from linears to switches, and some of you are just starting to do this. And with the linear switching power supply, we start, of course, with the AC input to our system. And then on the output of the power supply, we have your required DC output. And what are the building blocks that we put in between? Well, first we start with isolation and step down. Normally step down in our transformer, but uh, of course some of you who have worked with old tube circuits in the old days may have stepped up the voltage as well. But normally we step them down to a lower voltage ready for our logic chips or our computer chips or so on to use. So that'll be a 50-60 hertz transformer. And when we do that, well, we, go, we follow the transformer with rectification. So that converts the AC input to DC. And then we need some bulk filtering. That means capacitors. And then some power semiconductors, which are going to regulate the output voltage out to the DC. We're going to need some control semiconductors to run these switching, uh, I'm sorry, not switching, uh, linear regulators. And then finally, we'll have some load filtering on the output to give our DC output. Now, one of the reasons that you might be looking at doing switching power supplies is the parts involved in these circuits are really quite large. Let's start with the first one here, the isolation or step-down transformer. And this here is a couple of kilograms, and this is rated 250 VA at 50 or 60 hertz. And it's really quite a massive component that you need to put into your system. And of course, if you're trying to do a two, 300 watt power supply, you're going to spend as much on iron and copper of this part as probably your entire budget for your switching power supply. So that gets quite big. Rectification, need some semiconductors there. They're quite small, whether they're on high voltage, low voltage side. So we'll always need some of those. Bulk filtering, you're going to need some fairly large capacitors because uh, you've got to take out 60 hertz ripple and reject that from your load. You can have some power semiconductors here, some more switches running as linear regulators. And on top of those, we're going to need some fairly massive heat sinks because this runs in the linear region and we've got to have a voltage drop across them to be able to regulate the output for varying different input voltages. So lots of heat sinking needed. So this uh, kind of size and cost of our power supply is really not tenable for the future. So what we want to do is uh, try and change the system. And to do that, we're going to take our AC input and connect it to the input of what is going to be a switching power supply. So we're going to rearrange these blocks now when we build a switcher. We're going to take our DC output here, which is of course what we want. And the first thing we do is we put rectification on the AC input. So our power semiconductors are now going right across the AC line to give us a DC voltage at the input. And then we take our bulk filtering, which is now sitting on the input of the power supply, rather than the output of the power supply. Our power semiconductors used to be on the low voltage side and now going to be on the high voltage side. And don't underestimate the trouble this is going to give you. Moving these power semiconductors to the kind of raw AC here, it's just been rectified and filtered with the bulk filter, is very different from having your power semiconductors on the secondary of a transformer. And that will cause you quite a bit of headaches in the future as you proceed with your power supply design. Our controllers are also going to be on the primary side. That's going to create another bit of a complication in switching power supply design. And now we've got to run a low voltage uh, semiconductors from a high voltage input. So there's all kinds of schemes that we have and clever control chips that we have for running these control semiconductors. My isolation step down transformer is now moved over here to after the power semiconductors. And we're going to switch these at maybe 100 kilohertz or so, so we can use a smaller transformer in our switching power supply. Add some more rectification on the output and then load filtering. So we've taken basically these same blocks here, different semiconductors in them of course, different ratings on the parts, but we've rearranged the same parts and that's given us our switching power supply design. Why would you want to do that? Well, remember the big transformer that was this? This is a 250 VA transformer and here is our 400 watt 
switching power transformer running at 100 kHz. So there's a massive change between these two parts. Huge savings in cost when we go from this to this. Efficiency, we can expect to go up from a kind of heat sink that we had like this before. We'll see Hinks to heat sinks shrink down to maybe this size. So we're going to do much better on efficiency, so much less heat, much less weight from this overall system. The capacitors, bulk filtering, load filtering, will go from big capacitors like this to little capacitors because we have much more capability now to regulate our ripple and do that efficiently, so we'll find that our, all of our passive parts actually are going to shrink down in size. So there's many, many reasons that we want to go to switching power supply design. And if you start reading through all the application notes, you'll find that it's, well, it looks like it's really pretty easy. Just throw some parts together and everything's going to work out fine. However, it doesn't always look better. All the parts look better, but if we find out, we're going to run into some problems with switching power supplies. And the first one we have is reliability. This was big and heavy, but it's awfully hard to make it fail. So you had a lot of ruggedness that came along with this heavy magnetic element. It provided, you know, protection from uh, over, over current because it's got, you know, fairly high resistance in the windings. So it's quite a rugged device. It's designed to be hooked passively across the AC input line. So there's only so much damage you can do to it. Also provided a lot of filtering to you. And when this, this tra power transformer disappears from the system, we've also lost, lost a lot of the filtering of the AC line. So that's going to hurt us a little bit. When we run our power semiconductors, we're going to be running them very fast, and we're going to have to control them very quickly. So that's going to impact our reliability. Safety. You have to worry about safety. Before, you bought a transformer like this, and everybody knew it was safe because the transformer manufacturer built it in. Now, you're going to take a little transformer like this, which you're going to build. You're going to add your own wires and tape on it, and you hope you're going to achieve the same level of safety as you had before. But you've got to worry about that now. It's part of your design process. Development time. It's quite easy to hook up a linear regulator to the output of a transformer. It is not easy, whatever they tell you, to hook up a switching power supply. It will take much, much longer to build your circuit, test your circuit, simulate your circuit, and find all the failure modes in there. Custom magnetics. You're going to have to learn how to wind magnetics your own, and you'll find there really aren't any canned procedures out there. You can come to our workshop if you like to help learn how to learn how to do magnetics, or you can read through all the books, which may or may not help you, may confuse you more than uh, they do actually help, because there's so much confusion in the field about how to build magnetics. But you will be involved in custom magnetics. EMI. You'll probably spend as much time on EMI and your power supply as you do on the rest of the design put together. One, when you're trying to debug waveforms, little glitches of noise will impact your performance and will slow down your development time. And then at the end of the development time, you're going to find you have to pass the EMI requirements. And that could be many months in the EMI lab, which can be quite expensive. Testing and qualification. It takes a long time to test a power supply and get it right. And of course, when you start stress testing them, you may find you run into a failure and your design has to go almost back to the beginning to make it a rugged switching power supply. And the last thing you need is a required design experience. Uh, not many people, not many of us learn how to design switching power supplies in school. It's something we acquire on the job. And trying to acquire this design experience, in my mind, it takes about 10 years to produce a, um, a dependable switching power supply engineer who has all the tools he needs to build a good power supply. So watch out. Everything looks better in a switching power supply. You're going to have to build them. It's going to be part of your future, but it's not going to be easy, whatever they might tell you. And be prepared for that. Thanks for watching. It's been Ridley TV. If you'd like more information on switching power supplies, we've got over 100 application notes and papers at www.ridleyengineering.com. Please go to our Power Supply Design Center. If you'd like to learn more about switching power supplies, please read our papers there or come to one of our design workshops and we'll help you get, get you on the right track. Thank you for watching.